With Russian ammunition depots exploding nearly every day, and now recent bridge attacks, and a real concern about the system circulating on pro-Russian social media sites, HIMARS seems to be making a real difference in the war. The question then becomes just how many systems and rockets can the US send? Its accuracy makes it a silver bullet, but it also costs its weight in silver, literally. The high price means lower numbers produced. So just how many does the US have? How many can it produce? How many can be sent? And then finally, what effects does it offer? We've seen the ammo depots, but how can Ukraine use it to help win the war? Or is it just another system, like all the rest in the past, that will hurt Russia, but not stop them? And speaking of modern warfare, our sponsor, Conflict of Nations. It's a military-themed strategy game set around the current era, where you fight with modern-day weapons and technologies to victory. It's a free-to-play, online, PvP strategy game where you choose a real country and lead them into war. Now I know many games have done this before, but they also add a real important extra element, the economy, research, and infrastructure. And as in the game and in real life, logistics won't necessarily win you the war, but a lack will absolutely lose it for you. It's an extra level of gameplay that I love and really adds a degree of realism. But if you do all that correctly, you'll gain access to over 100 modern weapon systems in the game, from stealth fighters to nuclear submarines. Also, the ability to forge alliances to compete in your own World War scenario. And the game is also available on PC as well as mobile, and you can switch back and forth with your same account. On top of all that, with my link down in the description, you'll get an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and a one month premium subscription for free. That offer is only available for 30 days though, so act quickly. Again, Conflict of Nations. First, some quick basics. The M142 HIMARS is a multiple launch rocket system built by Lockheed Martin. It's essentially a smaller, wheeled version of the M270 MLRS that's been in service since the 80s. The smaller size means it can only carry half the number of rockets, with one pod of six rockets compared to two. At first, that might sound like a drawback, but its smaller size means it can be easily transported by aircraft, which allows it to be put into the field much faster than the M270, and makes it more maneuverable, flexible, faster, and able to conceal, all of which greatly outweigh its lower payload capacity. In fact, Russia is also recognizing this advantage, creating the Tornado, a lighter version with less rockets, from the Smirch. Also, the rockets already come in their pod, and this makes reloading much faster than having to have to load each rocket individually like we typically see in a lot of Russian systems. Reloading time is roughly 5 minutes compared to the 30, or often much longer, reload times of Russian systems. But speaking of payload, its biggest advantage over most older rocket artillery systems is the fact that it's guided. Still today, especially in Russia, most rocket artillery is unguided. And those still have their benefits, they're a lot cheaper and they can blanket a large area if you know the enemy is there and spread out. But today, precision is much more important. Units tend to disperse or spread out to avoid things like this. So having a rocket that can hit a point target with just one compared to a hundred or more unguided quickly make up for its higher costs. This guided rocket is the M30 family GMLRS. Along with accuracy, it has a much longer range than the M26 it's replacing. Now that exact range is classified, with the military and manufacturer just stating that it's more than 70 kilometers, but most estimates put it around 90 to 100 kilometers. This range gives Ukraine a huge area of Russian-occupied territory it can strike, as you can see here. These GMLRS are basically just short-range ballistic missiles, more so than MLRS. They just have a smaller warhead of 91 kilograms compared to most ballistic missiles being closer to 500. The extended range GMLRS, which Ukraine has not officially been given yet, increases that range to a similar range of the Toychka ballistic missiles. Again, the smaller warhead might seem like a drawback, but it's much more accurate and you can carry six compared to just one. Also, its smaller size compared to ballistic missiles make them much more difficult to detect and therefore shoot down, which is something Russia appears to be having trouble with. Countering rockets, artillery and mortars, or CRAM, is a relatively new technology, and it's something that Russia hasn't invested in as much as Israel, for example, with their Iron Dome system. So, if you cannot reliably shoot them down, the only way of countering them is to hunt them down and destroy them on the ground. But this is not easy to do. As mentioned, HIMARS high mobility makes it easier to move, set up, launch, and drive off and hide. And the long range of the rockets means it can be further back from the front line, which puts any Russian aircraft or drones searching for them at greater risk of being shot down. Using standoff range weapons like cruise missiles, even if they did find one, are too slow, and by the time it got there, the HIMARS would likely be gone. So it is a real problem for Russia. It's similar to the US and allies during the Gulf War hunting Scud missiles. They didn't have a lot of success either, despite the fact that they had better air superiority and Scud missiles took at least a half hour to set up and launch. It's extremely difficult to find these things. Russia is trying though. The Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, ordered making finding them a priority for Russia. They've now claimed to have destroyed a few, but there's still no verifiable evidence that they actually have. 
The only thing I could find is this video here, which claimed to be one. But as you can see, it skips the actual video of impact. Also, if we freeze it, we can see the vehicles shown are definitely not HIMARS. HIMARS has a pretty distinct appearance from above. And here seems to show a larger cargo truck, a truck full of logs, and another truck with a smooth topped cargo area. Now going back to Russia's post, they did say that they destroyed a transport slash loader vehicle. Well, there is no loader for HIMARS. It has a built-in capability to hoist and load pods. Now maybe the one covered truck could be said to be carrying and transporting those pods, but it's impossible to tell. And it looks like it might be a tight fit in that vehicle. Now, none of this means that Russia cannot destroy them. They likely will eventually find some and strike them, but it is a real difficult problem for them. So with the ability to accurately hit targets far away and tough for Russia to counter, it sounds like Ukraine would want to get as many as possible. There are a few bottlenecks though. First is obviously training, teaching them how to use it. Its high-tech systems make setting it up, calibrating, targeting, and launching much easier. The universal fire control system, which is currently installed, makes it much quicker and intuitive to learn. In the US Army, training courses are about seven weeks long, and then additional courses for advanced training. However, it's reported that a crash course is being given to Ukrainian crews that could be completed in three weeks total. So that's one bottleneck. The next bottleneck would be how many the US even has. First, it's worth noting that the older M270 is also being sent to Ukraine, and they can also fire the GMLR's guided rocket. But in terms of HIMARS, the US Army has procured about 450, with 395 still in service. The US Marines, I couldn't find a specific number, but they have five artillery battalions, each battalion should have three batteries, and each battery with six launchers. So 90 active, plus some in reserve, which would give a total of around 500 in the US. The US has been procuring new HIMARS systems at about 20 a year, 19 this year, and 23 stated for 2023. So how much of their own stockpile they'd want to dip into is the question. The Army acquisition objective is to have 521, and that's in the US Army alone. But due to the circumstances, it could reduce that number to equip Ukraine. Likely, the US could transfer somewhere around 100 before seriously hurting their own operational readiness in the event a war ever broke out. So far, Ukraine has received 12, with reportedly another four coming. The more they receive, obviously the more targets they can strike. However, again training, and also logistics of transporting all of them around the country, setting up supply and maintenance facilities will all limit the number that they could operate. But the bigger bottleneck is the number of rockets. To be honest, we really don't know which rockets Ukraine has been receiving. It's almost certainly one of the GMLRS family. Currently, there are three. One has a cluster munition, which the US stopped using, but it is possible existing stocks could be sent to Ukraine, or it could be the replacement, the alternative warhead, which has nearly 200,000 preformed tungsten fragments, which are useful against soft targets spread out over an area, or the unitary, with a 200 pound or 91 kilogram warhead. The US typically procures anywhere from 5,000 to 9,000 GMLRS a year. Recently though, that number has been decreasing as they've been buying more of the longer range ER GMLRS. In total, about 58,000 GMLRS have been produced. Ukraine, with soon to be 16 systems, say each firing and reloading three times a day means an upper limit of around 288 rockets a day. They're able to fire a lot more, but they're gonna be limited by the number of targets and good coordinates available, as well as logistics. Each pod weighs roughly two and a half tons. Now, how exactly Ukraine transport these is more complicated, as any larger trucks draw attention, which Russia might notice, follow, and then destroy the launcher. So for these 16 launchers alone, there could be roughly 50 trips taken daily, all of them trying to remain hidden from the enemy. And just at that rate alone, they could be using more rockets in 22 days than the US produces in an entire year. In fact, they'd use every single GMLRS ever made in 201 days. So the biggest limiting factor is ammo, especially as the war drags on. The number of rockets the US sending isn't clear, but assuming a similar rate to the number of launchers, that number is likely somewhere around 2,000, enough for each launcher to reload and fire 21 times, which means targets have to be carefully selected. It's unlikely to waste these on individual Russian vehicles, like artillery, and the most notable targets have been those ammunition depots. But recently, the most interesting one was a bridge, a bridge that can make a huge difference. Ukraine's best chance of retaking one of their cities is probably Kherson. Ukrainian forces are currently about 20 or 30 kilometers from the city, and they've been continuing to make advances over the last two months there. Kherson only has one nearby bridge over the river that's to the southwest, which Russia uses to transport vehicles, munitions, and other supplies. The next nearest crossing is 50 kilometers upriver, so losing that one bridge could cut off Russian forces in the city from heavy resupplies and reinforcements, forcing them to travel a much longer route and exposing themselves to Ukrainian attack before they could finally arrive in the city. 
It's worth noting there is a railroad bridge just six kilometers up, but all reports indicate that it's not being used. And Ukraine has began striking that bridge with HIMARS. Bridges in general are real difficult targets. They're not very wide, meaning you have to have extreme precision, and they are built to withstand the harshest of conditions, so it's not easy to destroy one. But footage shows extremely accurate hits, and now Russia has stated that it had to stop heavy vehicles from crossing the bridge until it can be repaired. As seen, lighter vehicles can still pass, but a 30-ton artillery system, a 40-ton tank, or even a 20-ton BMP, especially multiple of them crossing, could further damage the structural integrity of the bridge. Repairs could take weeks, and even then the repair crews could be struck again with HIMARS. The river is too wide for a makeshift bridge, but they could potentially use pontoons to transport vehicles across, although again, those staging points could be targeted. So Kursan will be an interesting one to watch and see what happens over the next few weeks and months. Then, finally, the future. HIMARS can carry longer range missiles as well, like ATACMS. It has a 300 km range that would allow Ukraine to strike Crimea and even Sevastopol from the current positions they hold, and also the bridge connecting Crimea to Russia, which again could make it much more difficult further down the line for Russia to reinforce Crimea. But it's worth noting that this is only hypothetical. Realistically, it doesn't seem like there's a high probability of Ukraine recapturing Crimea. Although recently, Russia has been reinforcing its air defenses around that bridge, possibly in a fear of such a strike. But Ukraine has not yet received attackums. The one big limiting factor of the US giving Ukraine these missiles is the fear of escalation. They do not want US systems to be used to strike Russian territory. Interestingly though, while Russia does consider Crimea their territory, the US officially does not. But if the goal is to avoid escalation, what matters more is what Russia considers, as it's what they would then act upon. So, HIMARS, along with the M270 MLRS, really gives Ukraine a huge boost in capability. But it is limited, mostly by ammo. There's only so many rockets that can be built in a year, so many built total, so many the US can transfer before running low on their own necessary stockpile, and so much logistics in place to handle them. They can potentially help turn the tide of the war, but Ukraine will have to use them effectively. And again, don't forget to go over and check out Conflict of Nations, but use my link down in the description to get that extra 13,000 gold and that one month premium subscription for free. Again, it's only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. So go click that link in the description, choose your country, and fight your way to victory.